Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Carol O'Sullivan. Um, I'm in the Computer Science Department here in Trinity, and my own area of research is computer graphics, computer animation. But what I'm going to talk to you today about is um, our two degrees, our degrees in computer science and our degrees in computer engineering, and hopefully persuade you that it's the right subject for you, or help you make up your mind anyway. Okay, so to start off with, um, I'll just try and, and pitch to you why Trinity is a good place to come in general and also uh, why it's a good place to study computer science. So we are Ireland's oldest and highest ranked university. So with a degree from Trinity, it's recognizable all over the world. P uh, no matter where you go, people will have heard of Trinity College. Uh, you have a, a, a good degree. That, that's a good calling card for whatever uh, job that you want. Um, the computer science department is the oldest computer science department in, in Ireland. Uh, it was the first established computer science department, and it's also the largest computer science department. So you've got a wide range of different people working in lots of different areas. Um, it's an international university. It's top research going on all across the university, and including in computer science and in engineering. So uh, you'll have people teaching you who are active in all sorts of interesting areas. And what we always try to do is to bring our own like little stories and experiences from uh, our research to bear on the problems that, that we're trying to teach you to solve in computer science. Um, it's in the center of the city, which is uh, uh, also something that people find quite attractive. It's great. You can go shopping, go for lunch. You're not stuck out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, our graduates are very employable, in particular in computer science. I mean, I'm sure you've seen lots of stuff in the news with the CEO of Google and people in Intel saying that they're crying out for quality graduates in computing subjects and ICT. So it's a very good time to be studying computer science. It's a very broad area or computer engineering. It, it sets you up for all sorts of different jobs. And I'll tell you about that. So overall, Trinity is a great place to study. I studied many years ago in Trinity as well. I actually studied mathematics, but we did a good bit of, of, of computer science then as well. And then I worked as a software engineer for several years in industry before coming back to do research. And uh, now I'm a professor in visual computing. OK, so let's talk, first of all, about the BA in computer science. So that's kind of the main computer science degree, or it's like the major in computer science, so to speak. And most recently, we've extended that into a five-year program. But you can choose to either come in for four years and leave with, a, with an honors BA. The moderatorship in Trinity is the name for, for the honors degree in computer science. So you can do that. You can come in and do the degree the way it is now, which is four years. Or you can opt to do what's becoming more popular internationally, which is to have a five-year integrated master's degree. So you would come out at the end with both a BA mod and a master's after if you, if you were to decide to do the extra year. But you don't actually decide that until at the end of third year. And then there's two different paths that you could take, depending on whether you're going to stay on for the integrated five-year degree, which allows you to become a chartered engineer or to apply to be a chartered engineer if you wanted to, um, or you can opt to leave after four years. So it's up to you. Um, it's something that international students, when they come here for a year or whatever, they usually, in France and Germany, the qualification that people usually leave university with is a master's, is a five-year master's. Okay, so it's, a, it's great to have that option available to you. So that's your options. Take a four-year for a BA mod, take an extra year for the master's, um, the key areas that we cover across the board in our courses are predominantly software in the computer science degree. And software is, uh, it consists of the systems that you write to run things. So like a computer game is a piece of software. Excel is a piece of software. You know, Microsoft Word. So developing those kind of software, those, that kind of software is, 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 is the core part of, of, of the, the course. Um, but it's also very important if you become a computer scientist and different types of jobs that you do when you want to solve problems in industry or in society or whatever, or the creative industries, you might work in animation or games or movies or something. Um, in that case, it's important to understand what your underlying hardware is. So the hardware are the actual pieces of equipment that run. So for example, you know yourself, if you're playing a game at home, um, if your computer is too slow, it doesn't have the right hardware, you don't, you, your, your game isn't as good as if you've got the right piece of hardware. So it's also very important to get the specification of your computer right. So if you want to become a well-rounded computer scientist, you need to understand the entire system, which is both the hardware and the software. There is a good deal of mathematics. It's not like a huge amount. So I'm listing these in order of the amount of time that we spend on it in the course. It's very important to understand mathematics. Okay, mathematics is a key skill. Um, and not really sort of the real abstract type of maths, but the very practical, 
problem-solving aspects of mathematics. So you do need to have a reasonably good grasp of your basic leaving start mathematics in order to do well in the course. And of course, there's the human side. So, so, so computer science isn't just about um, you know, nerding away at your desk and, or whatever. This, everything that you're creating, all the systems that you create, are meant to be there for people, the end users who use it. So you need to understand a bit about psychology, how people work, you know, you need to understand how they, how they see and perceive the things that you're creating for them. So there's an element of that as well. So all together, it's sort of very, it's looking at computer systems from across the board, the widest spectrum. Um, another new uh, introduction to the computer science degree here is if you choose at the end of third year to do the masters in computer science, so the integrated masters, then what happens is in your fourth year, um, you go off and you do a six-month uh, internship with industry. And this is a really good opportunity because, as I said, you know, the, the, the Googles and the Intels and the smaller startup companies and the SMEs, they're very keen to have high-quality interns and graduates from computer science. So there's a, a huge range of, 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 of companies who have signed up to our internship program. So you'd have the chance to go off for six months to one of these industries, working on a project that's very relevant to your degree. And then you come back in your, in your fifth year and you do a, a bigger project or a dissertation and, uh, and some group work as well. Okay? So um, if, you, if you opt to go for the, the four years, you do a final year project in your fourth year. Okay? And there wouldn't be an internship. Um, the kind of careers, there's a, a wide variety. Software engineers are needed in many different industries. Um, some people go into consultancy, some people go into management. You're, it's, computer science is a great degree. It's one of those kind of core degrees that equips you for many, many different types of industries and many different types of jobs. There'll always be a need for somebody, because computers are such an integral part of our lives, there'll always be a need for somebody who knows something and who's very comfortable and expert in ICT. And that could be across the board. You can go into the creative industries, like I was saying, you could work in the games. The movie industry, you, you have a, a, a degree that moves across countries, okay? Um, so it's not like a very specific degree. You don't have to make up your mind now what you're gonna do with it. You just want to know that you do like computing, you like the different aspects of computing, and then your career choices are, are wide open at the end. Okay. Um, the BA and the BAI in Computer and Electronic Engineering is a slightly different course, but it's also delivered by people in computer science and in engineering. And again, a recent addition there is that there's also an integrated master's option available on this course as well. So again, you don't decide that at the beginning. You make up your mind at the end of third year, and then you can go on and you do that. You could do this uh, five-year degree. And it's actually particularly important for engineers to have a master's degree, because Engineers Ireland, for example, um, are requiring that all chartered engineers have a master's qualification. Okay, so they are accrediting this five years master's, and they're also in the process of acc accrediting computer science degree as well. So with both degrees, you can apply to be a chartered engineer. Um, again, you can take the BAI, which is an honors, four years honors uh, computer science, uh, computer engineering degree over four years um, and leave uh, at, at that point if you wish to, but you can add on this fifth year. And before it used to be that you could get chartered engineer status with a four-year degree, in the future you're going to have to have the five-year degree. Um, the key areas in uh, in, in uh, in um, electronic engineering, in, in addition to hardware and software, um, mathematics is very important as well for engineering. You also need honors maths for engineering. And, but a nice part of this, if you really don't want to focus right away in on computer science, is that you do two years of general engineering, first of all, which really helps. I mean, the, you get slightly different graduates because engineering graduates tend to be very hands-on. They know a lot of broad-based in, uh, information. So you do a bit of civil, you do a bit of mechanical, you do a bit of electrical, and you do a bit of computer engineering in first and second year, and then you choose in third year your stream. And the computer engineering uh, stream is becoming more and more uh, popular. So you can do computer engineering or computer and electronic engineering, and they have much more computer science options in, in, in it that are available to you. And then you can go on to your fifth year and, and really focus and specialize. So it's quite a good option if, you, if, 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 if you're thinking that you'd like something much more broad-based. Uh, it's a very strong interdisciplinary emphasis in engineering of sort of bringing in uh, disciplines like physics, maths, bioengineering, for example, all those different things and bringing them together with computer science. The kind of uh, careers that you have in engineering are similar. 
very, very similar to what you would have after computer science. Computer science, you, 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 it's, it's more focused on computer science for the four years. Engineering, you have uh, sort of a broader base of the different types of industries that you would go into, might vary slightly. Um, again, hardware and software engineering, um, consultancy, management, a lot of our, our graduates end up in a wide variety of different roles. Um, so, and again, you've got this, this, the, this whole, whole set of options. Again, there, there's a whole load of different industries out there who are looking for computer science and computer engineering graduates. Um, come if, so so they're, they're quite similar. You would come out and go into a similar kind of job. It's just what you do during the, the courses are, are a bit different. Okay? But the common, course, the common features of all of these courses that I'm talking about is problem solving. So what you need to do is think to yourself, are you the type of person who likes to get a problem? And a problem could be anything, just something that you're trying to solve in your daily life. And you like to sort of work through it step by step and try to see what are the steps, what would be the best ways, what would be the options of tackling that. So kind of being able to see a logical set of steps that you need to take to solve your problem. That's what you need for computer science and computer engineering. Um, analyzing things, again, that's an important part of, uh, of solving problems, but like taking things apart would be one example in, in terms of you know, physical mechanical engineering, but taking a problem apart and understanding its different parts. That's what you need to do and be able to do and want, enjoy doing um, when you're doing computer science and computer engineering. Um, you acquire a lot of transferable skins, skills. It's a very much a hands-on active kind of degree. So you're always doing stuff in labs, you're, you're solving problems, you're working in teams, and while you're doing, you're doing presentations maybe, you're talking to, to, to companies, you're going out doing an internship maybe, you're doing a final project that might be a, a company involved uh, with that as well. Okay, so um, you're getting a lot of transferable skills, skills that you can transfer into the job that employers find useful. Okay, so because we have um, accreditation by Engineers Ireland, they look at our courses to make sure that we're also endowing you with the kind of skills that make you employable and useful. Okay, um, but our teaching is 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 one of one of our strongest qualities as well. And one of the reasons our teaching is so good is because Trinity is so strong in research, and we have so many exciting research projects and good researchers, and we all teach. Okay, so we all teach all of those who are active in research. We also actively teach, and. Uh, what we'd like to do is to bring our research in to inform our teaching. So you're, you're actually getting, getting examples and getting access to people who are really at the cutting edge of research in, in these areas. High graduate employability, I've said that before. There are many, many companies there. It's really one of the areas where there is not rising unemployment, where there's attra attractive jobs um, um, to, to be had. Um, there's also lots of choice. It's not like a course where you're really restricted um, to a single path and you do this and first year, this and second year. There's a certain element of that in the early years, of course, as you get the groundings. But as you go on into your later years, the amount of choice and the different options that you have are very, very wide. So depending on your tastes and your abilities and your skills and uh, what you enjoy doing, you're able to kind of, you know, uh, take a different strand or a different pathway in your degree. And then finally, um, there's lots of working together. It's not like a, something where you're in the library all the time with your head in books. Okay, there's a bit of that, of course, there always is, but there's an awful lot of teamwork. So there's a lot of working in the labs together, working on projects together, um, and uh, that's, that's, what's, that's very satisfying for, 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 for most people. It's also something that you really need in work. I mean, that's what very often employers, they don't really care that much about your undergraduate degree as long as it's a good degree in a, in a sort of a cognitive. What they want to know is, can they get you in? Will you work in a team? Can you work with people from a different area? Can you respect other people's points of view? So there's lots and lots of opportunities of doing that in both of these degrees. OK, the balance of workload, lectures, tutorials, labs, reading, projects, um, and exams. So it's this, this kind of breakdown. But you can see there's a lot of practical work that needs to be done. OK. So project work is just as much and just as big as the lectures. Lectures are just a quarter of the work. Um, why would you want to look for a job in ICT? So now there's never been a better time okay, to choose a job in ICT or a degree that will qualify you and make you attractive to employers in ICT. It's, uh, the exports in 1910 alone were 50, 50 billion euros, which is 25% of Ireland's total turnover. So when you think of that, okay, agriculture used to be sort of the biggest sort of uh, 
um, um, employment or activity in Ireland. 25% is now software. Okay? Um, employment is massive. And, and they, they're, they're still saying that they can't get enough quality gra graduates in ICT. So not only is it a good uh, subject to, to choose, it's also good for the country for, to, for you to, to study this subject because then you, you, you are contributing to these companies, these high quality companies here. We've replaced graduates with all of these companies here. These, these companies actively recruit from our degrees because they know that there are high quality graduates coming out of our degrees. Okay, so it's, 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 there's never been a better time to choose ICT as part of the government strategy for, for renewing the knowledge-based economy, etc., blah, 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 of the country, okay? Um, not only have, uh, do we contribute by educating graduates who go on to, to, to populate these companies and end up in management and, and senior positions in these companies, but th we've also been contributing to uh, the Irish economy by uh, graduates actually setting up Companies. So some of the best examples out of the computer science department, um, Havoc is one company. Havoc is a company that makes middleware for computer games. Um, it's, it's, it's one of Ireland's most successful software companies. It was bought by Intel a couple of years ago for $100 million. It was set up by people who were in my own research group, uh, Stephen Collins and Hugh uh, Reynolds. They set it up um, and it's, it's used in almost every game that you see where you have to see any physics or character character physics or whatever. Iona Technologies and Demonware are also, two, uh, also examples and the rest of hugely successful companies. Okay, so we were right at the core, at the heart of the ICT industry in Ireland. Um, points and entry requirements. Um, as I mentioned before, mathematics is important. You do need to have a C3 or higher in mathematics. And this is, this is something that's, that's important because all that ana analysis and problem solving is very much correlated with ability in mathematics. And it doesn't have to be kind of esoteric mathematics, just like the, the, the general purpose problem solving aspect of mathematics that you do in your Leaving Cert course. And that's a pretty good indicator. If you, if you like that, if you're reasonably okay at it, you don't have to be a genius, you don't have to be Albert Einstein, but you do need to be comfortable enough with your, your sort of basic Leaving Cert mathematics. All right. uh, the points for engineering um, last year were 410, and the points for computer science for 385. And last year we saw an enormous increase in the number of applicants for both the, the computer science and the computer engineering options uh, because people know they can see that this is where the future lies for employment in Ireland. Um, okay, so that's kind of the broad base. I uh, just want to give you a little flavor of some of the research that you that you might sort of come across if you came to study here. So my own area is visual computing. And the visual computing is basically uh, research into any aspects of images, animations, 3D models, 3D graphics, games, etc. Um, and uh, one area in particular that I work, work on is uh, human animation and human uh, uh, crowd and crowd simulation. Okay, and I'll show you a movie, hopefully it'll run okay. Um, so here, for example, are just some examples in the industry of where virtual humans and animation are important. Uh, you've, we've seen uh, motion capture technology being used for Gollum and Lord of the Rings, for avatars in, in the movie Avatar, slightly less successfully for Tom Hanks' character in uh, Polar Express. Um, we see a very similar area to computer graphics is actually uh, humanoid robots and androids. There's an example of a guy called Ichiguru who actually built an android of himself but to actually make a make an Android move, um, the, the science and the technology and the maths behind it is, is pretty much the same as making a human virtual character move. And we've got to the point in, in creating virtual character. Here's an example from Paul Debevec's group. Uh, and Paul Debevec was a guy, his group worked uh, on Benjamin Button, you know, the movie Benjamin Button, where the guy got older and older and younger and younger. Um, and uh, so we're actually able to get to the point where we can create pretty realistic virtual humans, but there's still something quite wrong. So um, if you notice, like, a, the, the most recent kind of hu uh, human, virtual human movies like Tintin and one Hugh, Hugo, I think, is the most recent one as well, they're going back to much more stylistic. They're trying to make it more like, look like a cartoon because people find realistic, extremely realistic humans very uncanny and difficult to, to swallow. Okay, so some of the work that we've done, we've worked with Disney Research, who, uh, who uh, and of course, Disney are trying very hard to make movies that people like and want to come and go to see. They've linked up with Pixar now. And we did a lot of work on creating interactions in little movies with virtual characters and then breaking them in different ways 
to try and find out what it is about virtual humans that freak people out. So it was fun. And uh, here's another example, Rachel McDonald, who's a lecturer in the group as well. Um, she, she found out, she, she sort of took different renderings of uh, different animations. This is actually a model of herself. Um, she did high-level renderings and more stylistic renderings and asked people questions about whether people were telling lies or not and found that the realistic human actually was found to be more of a liar than the, than the cartoon-like like humans. So here, I'm just going to give you a flavor of why, of why computer science isn't just about the technical nuts and bolts of creating things. It's also about the human side as well, because ultimately you need to create systems and animations and, 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 and other, other outputs that people use and want to use. We've also done some work. Here's another example of something that's available in industry um, of, of, of allowing art architects to sketch in 3D. Um, so that they can create designs of, of models, and this was used um, to design a sculpture that's going to be appear in downtown Manhattan next year. All right, here's an example from another department from from the School of Engineering, Anil Kakaram, um, uh, uh, who's the head of the Sig Media Group. Uh, he's been involved for several years in restoring old movies and also doing post production on movies, and he actually won an Oscar in 2007. Um, for work that he did with a company called The Foundry on, um, on, on, on doing post-production tools that were used in movies like The Matrix and many other movies that you see. It's kind of a common industry standard now, the, the plugins that he worked on. And his company called Green Power Pictures uh, has recently been bought by Google. Um, and his, his technology is now being used by YouTube in order to improve the quality of videos that people upload to, to YouTube. And this is a person, um, he's, he, and his, his colleagues are teaching on the computer engineering degree as well. Um, so you would have access to people like that who are working in that kind of area and bring those kind of ideas and examples, which makes it much more motivating when you're doing the nitty-gritty science. It's good to know what's that really used for in, 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 in the real world. Okay. Um, oh, before I go to questions, I'm going to try, because this is a Mac and I hate Macs, uh, I'm going to go to QuickTime Player. So the first one I want to show you is uh, just a project that we work on here called Metropolis. Maybe you can run it for me in one second. I just want to tell them first. Um, a project called Metropolis where we built a virtual Dublin and then we populate it with virtual humans and crowds in a kind of a game-like environment, so it's real time. And that was a project that ran over the last four years and we've just got a new European project now where we're going to use this technology in order to help people with um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, other types of problems to use it as an interventional therapy together with doctors. Okay, would you mind? The sound I think is just on the laptop. But it's not so important. Okay. So this is a wire so we have the uh, people monitoring the cells, texture for the photographs, uh the environment with uh crowds of people, so there's um and nice lighting effects, etc. games a lot, you know, interacting between characters, trying to make that faster, trying to make it more realistic. So you've all seen strange things in games that you know, it's easy to know what's going wrong in games. We try to do things to find out how we can fix them um, very quickly. And so you see the difference between movies with plenty of time to, to solve the problems. In real-time games, you're doing with like 25, 60, 100 times a second, so there's much less time to be able to actually fix what's going on. Try to do things like work out how do groups interact with each other. So again, the human aspect of things. How do people behave when they're in a crowd? How do they? What kind of people do they like? How do they gravitate towards other people? Etc. Okay. I'm going to close that one down. And uh, the next one I want to show is uh, a movie that was created this summer, um, and it's an example. It was it was a summer internship opportunity for two computer science students who worked with two students of animation from the Irish School of Animation in Ballyfermot. And they're the guys who've had the graduates who have, have had Oscar-winning graduates like Richie Bain, who did the special effects in Avatar. And we worked together over the summer together with a, a, a small startup company called Giant Creative to create this movie. And it was a lot of fun, so I'm going to show it to you now. Go ahead. 
This movie uh, is actually it's running up upstairs in the in the foyer that shows you kind of all the different steps that went through to solve that particular problem. So um, I'm going to finish up there, and I'm, uh, Jonathan over here is available to answer more. So I can answer them as well, but he's available. He knows all the nuts and bolts of the two degrees. Um, he can give you. Uh, can you just put, put it up? Questions. So he can give you all the details that you might want to ask if anybody has any questions, or you can come up to us afterwards, maybe. Okay, thank you.